Well, good morning, everybody. I hope that uh, you find this discussion interesting today. It uh, certainly has been something that's been on my mind quite regularly for the last few years. As Gus was just saying, this is my 36th year in the glass business. I started out as a glazer up in Seattle, Washington. The last 33 and a half, 34 years, I have been in positions of supervisor, manager, and now president of Steel Encounters. I've been with the company for 22 years. When I began in 1996, there were about 60 employees. Today, we've grown to well over 320, 330, somewhere in there, right now today. The last three years for our business have been the greatest growth years in our company's history. And with that, and as many of you are aware, new people and growth change culture. I would estimate that half of our employees have been with us less than three years. Things are very, very different now than they were 10 years ago. So two years ago, I then began asking myself some hard questions. Solving this culture puzzle that involves people. Have you ever asked yourself, what drives good company culture? How do I build a positive work environment? When I think of the word culture, I think of two aspects. First, the times in which we live, the external influences that impact the way we think, act, and make choices. And secondly, the culturally creative work. This is where we, as business leaders, need to be very intentional. We need to have an understanding of one before we can create the other. And in these next slides, we will explore the elements of culture that I have been trying to create. A culture that motivates employees. Have you ever asked yourself, what motivates my people? What brings purpose and meaning to their work? What do they value? What elevates their thinking to the big picture? A culture that our employees love. What would happen in your business or your company when your employees truly love their work? and love your business. It'd be revolutionary, wouldn't it? This goes back to how do we create a healthy work environment? And what will make their work more meaningful? We want a culture that, it keep, that encourages teamwork. How do we encourage teamwork? How do we improve in communication between people? How do we build community and belonging for our employees. We want a culture that attracts talent. A place where people want to be part of who we are. A culture that encourages everyone to be their best at work. And a place where everyone rises to the occasion. Once again, how do we build great company culture? A place where we have common expectations for our integrity and understanding what our customers need and value. That an individual's performance matters to the whole team and everyone conducts themselves in a professional manner. So I'm going to share with you what provoked my research and the journey that followed this last two years. And I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share a little bit of what I've learned with you. But I have to tell you, I am no expert. I'm still figuring this out, probably as you are also. Ninety-five percent of candidates believe that culture is more important than compensation. This is the most important lesson that I've learned in this last two years. 
company culture really matters. So significantly that 95% of candidates believe this is more important than compensation? Wow. Your culture is paramount to be successful in recruiting and retaining talent. I also learned about the changing multi-generational workforce. In 1997, there were four general generations in our workforce. Only 2% were from the greatest generation. 18% the silent generation. 31% Gen X and 49% baby boomers. Let's fast forward 20 years. What a change. 2% still remain from the silent generation. 29% are baby boomers. 34% Generation X and 34% Millennials. So who makes up these generations? Baby Boomers, born 1946 to 1964. Gen X, born 1965 to 1981. Millennials, born 1982 to 1996. And welcome the newest generation, Generation Z, born 1997 or later. All of these generations have different needs and motivations. The generation with the greatest influence on our culture, though, is the millennials. Let's talk for a moment about job movement and retention, average job tenure. Over a baby boomer's career, they'll spend an average of seven years with an employer. Generation X, an average of five years. and baby boomers only two years. Since job turnover is highest with millennials, let's concentrate on them for just a minute. The millennial generation. By 2025, three out of every four workers globally will be millennials. 89% of millennials would prefer to choose when and where they work rather than being placed in a 95 position. 45% of millennials will choose workplace flexibility over pay. 56% of millennials won't accept jobs with companies that ban social media. Millennials want to do meaningful work with a purpose all the time. Not just sometimes, all the time. Millennials are also shaping our communication. Millennials prefer to communicate in this order. Text or instant message apps such as WhatsApp, Email with the subject line being most important. Social media. A phone call. And last of all, in person. Let's listen in on our conversation for a moment. How's your coffee? Love it. How's yours? Delicious, they got it right this time. Perfect. Most upper management, myself included, is from a baby boomer generation. We are vastly different in our approach to communication than millennials are. And that is why it is so important that we have a strategy to bridge this generation gap. I'm going to share with you today five strategies that we employed last year 
to retain and engage our employees. Okay, click. There we go. Go to where your employees are. Communication is the key. This is why we developed an employee app, yeah, which I'm going to share a little more with you. Still in Canada has five offices, one in Seattle, three in Salt Lake City, one in Jacksonville, Arkansas. We also have a fabrication facility, and we may be on as many as a dozen or 15 job sites at a time. Our workforce is scattered all over the place. So communication with our employees has been a challenge. This is why we created the employee app. Okay, clicker's a little slow. Okay, number two, measuring and improving employee engagement. We began quarterly engagement surveys with Amplify, our engagement consultant. Number three, meeting employees' needs. We discovered an effective employee assistance program to help our employees in their personal times of need. Employee development program. We began training in earnest to equip supervisors and managers to succeed in their work. And number five, branding your company culture. This is sharing what's most important about our company with our employees and with people looking from the outside in. So strategy number one, go to where your employees are. Tech and communications trends. Smartphones outsell tablets, laptops, and desktops combined by a large margin. People look at their phones 150 times a day and spend an average of three and a half hours on their phone. Some of the statistics I saw were up to five hours a day that people will spend on their phone as an average. In 2013, 80% of this time was spent in apps, 20% browsing the web. By 2016, 90% of that time was in apps. Smartphones are the most used tools in people's lives. To engage employees, we must meet them where they are. Sorry, the clicker is just not keeping up with me. So we developed the Still Encounters Employee Communications app. This, I have to tell you, was a big undertaking. We put a lot of thought into what our employees would use and find helpful. To help motivate them to use our app, we offered them a $40 a month reimbursement to download and use the Still Encounters app on their personal phones. Or we offered them one of these an iPhone, and we paid for the program for it. It comes with the app loaded on it. I'm going to go back. Key information about the company and our job site locations is shared with our employees through this app. This tool has empowered us to keep our workforce in the know. Employees can click on a project location and receive directions for where they are through Google Maps. This helps them get to work, hopefully on time. A company directory. We made intercompany communications easy and convenient. Here we go. Easy and convenient with the company directory. This helps everyone to communicate well. And puts a name with a picture so that when we have company gatherings, our employees can recognize each other. This is a great bonding tool. And this is all about building 
culture of community at work. We loaded our HR benefits, payroll, health, and wellness program. Our employees want to know, what does the company offer me and my family? And this tool gives them and their spouse easy access for our benefits and payroll information. We also have our company store, logo clothing, swag, and tools. So why do we have logos on our company Slack? It gives association and identity with something that our employees are proud of. A sense of belonging and pride in our company. And when asked about still encounters, it opens the door for them to tell others about our great company. Newly awarded projects with two divisions, structural and architectural, employees don't always hear what the other division is working on. Knowing that we are landing work brings a sense of security, purpose, and shares the big picture of our future. Customer praise about their work, and our employees love to hear this. This is where we post letters from our customers, architects, building owners, and contractors, praising still encounters and our employees for their work. This positive affirmation from our customers reaffirms our employees that their work has purpose and meaning. All this affirms this investment to communicate with the employees. Oh, and by the way, our app won the Society of Marketing Professionals Internal Communications Award last year. My screen, here we go. Okay, strategy number two, measuring and improving employee engagement. You know, people can be very content or satisfied with their job. They may like their pay, their vacation benefits, uh, vacation time benefits, their, their bonus program. Maybe their job is easy and they enjoy it and they like it, but employee satisfaction does not equate with employee engagement. Engagement is very different. Engagement is an employee's intellectual, their head, and emotional heart connection with an employer demonstrated by motivation and commitment in their hands to positively impact the company vision and goals. According to Amplify, our engagement consultant, only 30% of employees are truly engaged with their business. Let me emphasize this again. If only 30% of employees are engaged nationwide with their business, that means 70% of the employees are disengaged. Employees will stay if they're engaged. Highly engaged employees are 87% less likely to leave their companies than their disengaged counterparts. This statistic is very revealing. An engaged employee is 87% less likely to leave than a disengaged employee? That's pretty important to know that. Measuring and improving employee engagement. Once again, Peter Drucker. What gets measured gets managed. I agree with him. So what do most business people say are their most important business metrics? I would venture to say their financial statements, profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flow. I agree, if you're not making money, you will go out of business. But I also believe there is another metric that many people overlook, and that's the measurement of their employee engagement. And what a better way to build a company culture then they'll utilize your employees' feedback as a roadmap. To begin with, we need to understand the different parts of the company, just as the human body has different parts. Let me ask you a question. 
Have any of you ever smashed your thumb with a hammer? Yeah, absolutely. How does that feel? The part that is hurting is not isolated from the whole. And sometimes serious issues are undetectable, and this is why I go in for a yearly physical. We must break the whole into parts for evaluation. A disgruntled or disengaged employee in one part of the company will affect other people. And likewise, happy, engaged employees will positively affect their coworkers. But I want to emphasize this to you business leaders. That you will only get truthful feedback by creating anonymity and without fear of attribution. This is critical to management earning employees trust. To tell you the truth, I want the unvarnished truth to come back to me. I don't want employees just to click on the highest standard because they want to see the company get a good score. I would rather have the truth about how they feel about their area of the business. We use quarterly surveys to measure engagement by constituency, the overall company, by generation, tenure, or time with the company, our shop, field, and office employees. These are all parts of the body that make up <coughs> steel and cameras. We receive quarterly engagement results. This dashboard shows the first four quarters of Steel Encounters quarterly engagement. Our engagement scores have improved every quarter, validating the effectiveness of our ongoing engagement strategies. Our last score placed Steel Encounters in the top 17% of the 150 organizations using Amplify's engagement survey. An astounding 82% participation by our employees, which is remarkable considering that most of our people work in the shop and fields. And 33% of our employees are highly or extremely highly engaged as compared to less than 25% nationwide. Engagement results are shown in heat map. Here we are reviewing how four generations in our workforce feel in 14 different distinctive engagement categories. Employee anonymity is protected. We only receive results when there is enough feedback from a constituency. And once again, I want to just emphasize this is critical to building trust with your employees. So let's look at the 14 drivers beginning of the next slide. Friendship. Employees have close relationships and feel cared about by another person or persons at work. Strategies to build friendship. <coughs> we create traditions by having employee gatherings throughout the year. And our employees have also, on their own, arranged Harley, motorcycle rally, uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle rallies. They play softball together. A vendor sponsored pheasant hunt bike rides, and hikes after work. Company arranged events include health and wellness events, hikes, 5Ks, runs, things like that. Inviting employees and their families to an amusement park every summer. We rented an entire bowling alley for a company holiday party last fall. And the first Friday of June, we flipped burgers in the parking lot of the office. The first Friday in September, we flip pancakes. We want to build community and friendship with our employees. All of these traditions help reinforce good culture. Shared values. Employees share common work attitudes and personal values with their coworkers. This measurement tells us how well we are developing a culture that values integrity, respect for each other, excellence in our work, that people take responsibility for their actions, we're creating teamwork, we're providing great customer service, 
And most importantly, the number one most important thing to me is the safety of our employees. If people are taking shortcuts, it's not acceptable. Number three, utilization. Employees feel that the organization effectively uses their abilities and skills in their role. This is the why of what we do. Bringing meaning to our work, even if a task is boring. Let me ask you a question. If you came to work for me and I handed you a shovel tomorrow morning and I said, dig me a six foot by six foot by six foot hole right here, would you be excited about that? Probably not. Especially if I came back two days from now and said, well done, dig me another hole. But what if we changed the meaning of the work a little bit? What if I was able to tell you that some madman in North Korea is going to launch a missile and it's going to strike our city tomorrow morning? And the only way that you and your family can survive is to dig a six foot by six foot by six foot hole and I will deliver you a concrete lid and your family can crawl inside it and you'll live through this event tomorrow, this nuclear attack. Does that change the meaning of the work to you? <laughs> Big time. Absolutely. Big time. You know what? Our people in the field, and sometimes even people in the office, their activities day to day can be quite boring sometimes. The days may just blur together. But if they understand the importance of what they're doing, and I'd love to make job site visits and go to our shop. I, I do. I love to go out there for the stretch and flex with the guys. And afterwards, I like to thank them for their hard work. But then I also tell them this. What you are doing today matters to me. It's important. I don't care if you're breaking up glass crates. I don't care if you're putting in zone dams or vinyl in the window or building a huge monumental curtain wall. Whatever it is you're doing, it is important to me, to your coworkers, and to this company, and most importantly, to the end user customer. It's a big deal, folks. People need to know the why of what they're doing to have a purpose and meaning. I'm not afraid to tell my employees that I'm giving them my very best. It's okay to say that. But I also am not afraid to ask them for their very best for me, for our customers, and our coworkers. Number four, role clarity. Employees can connect their daily work tasks to the purpose of the business and have clarity about what that work is. Role clarity is a prerequisite to effective team performance. It's not just an individual role clarity, but also of their teammates. Everyone needs to understand the importance of their role to our success. Measurement number five, competency. There is a match between the employee's ability and the challenge of their work. Low competency scores can reveal a need for additional training and education. This is a combination of the knowledge, skills, abilities, and personal attributes that contribute to enhanced employee performance and ultimately result in organizational success. Measurement number six, the manager. This is a broad assessment of the relationship between the employee and his or her manager that looks at respect, feedback, fairness, development, and advocacy. This can also tie back to a manager's understanding of the different generations in the workforce. You know, many managers are promoted because of their technical knowledge. Is that true? Probably for many of us in this room, what we knew got us that advancement. But there's also a need to develop and learn emotional intelligence skills which is a very important training, especially for new managers. You know what, I also think it's very important that we know how we're viewed by our employees. It's 
critical. As a leader, you need to know how people feel about you within your organization. Trust. Employees feel there is trust and respect in the working environment, specifically between people they work mostly, uh, they work most closely with. This can identify if there is a need for trust and respect training. Strong managers confront behavior that creates distrust and holds people accountable for their actions. Could I suggest create a no gossip policy? Encourage people to communicate with each other with radical candor? If you haven't read her book yet, I highly recommend to you that you get a copy of Kim Scott's book, Radical Candor. Number eight, feedback. Employees feel they receive adequate and helpful feedback. Perhaps you can create a recognition program. Thank employees for doing a good job. Speak the truth constructively when employees fall short of expectations. And by the way, millennials need a lot of feedback, daily if possible. And just so you know this, um, I have on my calendar every Friday at 10.30, I have a scheduled appointment to remind me to send an employee a card and just share with them how proud I am of them or a recent accomplishment or something that they did above and beyond for the company. Number nine, purpose. Employees know why the business exists beyond making a profit. This ties to the importance of understanding why everything matters to me, to the company, and to our customers. And like I said earlier, examples of when I talk to our men, I want to encourage them to take care of all three of those aspects. Our business also exists to do good in the community, and this is why we match employees' charitable giving and conduct food bank drives and share a portion of our net revenues with, our, with, with charities. Our employees know this. They know that there's a further purpose besides just making money for our company. Number 10, autonomy. Employees are trusted to use their expertise to make decisions about how to do their job. This is a great validation of the importance of lean and continuous improvement initiatives that engage employees in eliminating waste. And to you, Walters and Wolf, that are in here, I believe you guys are the model company in taking forth these lean initiatives. Thank you guys. You've been a great example to me and to our company also. I want to encourage you, business leaders, train your employees well, get out of the way, and let them do their job. Authenticity. Employees have a purpose, have a sense that leadership is honest about the business and themselves. It is important for us as leaders to show vulnerability. I want to encourage everyone, keep your word. If you promise something, Deliver on it without excuse, even when it costs you something. Have any of you ever had to deliver on a promise that cost you dearly? I have. It may be the greatest test for, that a leader will face within a business. Fairness. This is number 12. Employees feel the rewards and treatment of individuals is fair within the organization. Do your employees believe decisions regarding compensation and promotions are, used, are, are made using a fair process? Are people in your organization being overlooked? And are we dealing with employee issues, I'm talking about discipline issues, with consistency? Number 13, personal time off. An employee sense that they can take PTO when needed. I've seen these numbers drop in quarters where we've been under demand to work a lot of overtime. People get tired, and it shows up in this number. Number 14, professional development. There is someone at work who encourages my professional development. 
Business leaders, what do you do to encourage professional development for your employees? I will share some more with you about this when we get to the employee development portion of my talk. So overall strategy number three, meeting employees' needs. This is an employee assistance program that gives our employees confidential help in times of need. And I think that this is one of the most powerful, meaningful benefits we have given to our employees this last year. I've had many employees come up to me surprisingly. I wouldn't know who's using it. It's I would never know except for people that have come up to me, but I know at least three people that have come up to me and thanked me for this because they received grief counseling for loss of a parent. Let me share a little more with you about what's in this program. This has helped for employees to deal with stress, anxiety, or depression, relationship and family issues, grief or loss, work-related issues, emotional challenges, senior care planning, substance abuse and addictions, and financial counseling. And this program is free to our employees, and they can find it in our app and call a number for help right out of our employee app. Employee development. Strengthening the foundation with training opportunities. This is my fourth strategy. Like adding rebar to concrete strengthens the foundation of a company, trained employees, or excuse me, uh, like adding rebar to concrete strengthens the foundation of a building, thank you, trained employees strengthen the foundation of a company. I truly believe that the employees are the foundation of a big, good business. This is why we hold continuous improvement workshops, monthly leadership development classes, monthly tech talks for engineering department. We begin weekly meetings with quick tips or keys to how to be more effectively, efficiently use computer software. And we've also launched a training portal that employees can access from their iPhones and iPads. We have also offered after work development of life skills. Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace. We recently had our credit union provide a financial wellness class. We had a class on dealing with stress over the holidays. We have offered a Saturday, a Saturday marriage class for our EAP and one-on-one -on -one investment advice from a 401k advisor. And this leads me to strategy number five. Branding your company culture. Your culture is your brand. Let me say this again. Your culture is your brand. Ultimately, your employees share your company culture and represent you. And Still Encounters employees would like to share their culture story with you. Let's watch this video. I got all complaints when I wake up in the morning from the work. Might be because it's Steel Encounters day as soon as I get in the car in the morning. The moment I walk on the job site. I uh, lace up my boots, we do our stretch and flex, we discuss what we're going to conquer today. Everyone says, hello, good morning, how are you? I think the people make the company. They genuinely care about me. Our managers and our supervisors are actually tell me, see how we do it. You're not just a face in the crowd. I feel like I'm known, I'm not just a man. I have a sense of dedication and fulfillment that I want to achieve every day. You constantly want to get better, you constantly want to show the people above you that you work hard. And I'm proud to be part of my discovery. You're doing what I have a passion for and love. And I should have came to work here 23 years ago. Traditions I love at Stone Towers would be the Lagoon Day and having just a fun day together. Really make bonds as a company. 
The Tonga truck was good. <laughs> Traditions I love at Steel Encounters would be singing off key at everyone's birthday. <laughs> There's a great camaraderie that exists among everybody. It's a family thing, it's a career of choice. You can sense that your brothers and your fellow co workers are out there with you with the same sense of pride. The pride I feel at Steel Encounters happens when I take something that we've done for a lot of years and make it better. Still kind of pride. Happens when I see a successful bid go through. I go to see what we push out of this building. Once you're done with it, you're like, yeah, I did it. Well, it's going to stand the test of time. You're able to drive past her, show your family and friends what you just accomplished. My dad was actually the couch. He went up to the very top and like placed the big glass and moved it all around and put it like on the wall and stuff. All that mattered is that we all return home safe to our families. We're expecting another one, which is great because of the health insurance. It was kind of a heavy burden that was lifted. Out camping, my son came running up to me, he was hurt. I was able to pull the MD light out, get right onto it, get the help I needed. And what kind of company offers that to you? It's right there in our app. I guess you would call it a full board of employee information. If you need a tool, it's readily available. What I've seen the wellness program accomplish is Boosting employee morale, employees bettering themselves. Not missing work and being there and working hard every day, that's healthy to me. My mom's had a really rough past. This job has given her a lot of different opportunities and a chance to turn her life around. ESOP has been a powerful retirement tool for me. It gives you a chance to, you know, feel like your money's going somewhere. It's helped me to achieve retirement goals that would have been impossible had it not been in place. Yes, I am retiring tomorrow. First purchases I'm going to make is a fishing boat to take me and my grandkids out fishing. You know, they don't work into the boat. They understand that, you know, family does come first. We have more family time. He's home in the evening. I know I count still encounters because my managers make me feel like it's more than just a job. I know my voice is heard. I feel like I'm needed here. I count on them just as they can count on me. The main thing I've always counted on them is to do the right thing for the employees and our customers. Who wouldn't want to work where it's happy? They basically gave me a home. I love what I do. And I've met friends here that I plan on having for life. someplace where everybody's happy, right? And they're sharing it with each other. It's a good reminder that we work at a great place. I want to quote a good friend of mine, Mark Slimmons. Mark has a Leader to Leader podcast. comes out on Mondays if you ever care to listen to him. But he closes every Leader to Leader podcast with this statement. Now go. Lead like someone you'd like to follow. Business leaders, I want to encourage you, once again, to go out today and lead like someone that you would like to follow. Thank you very much.